Hi, I'm Neely Jones, your host of Focus on Suppliers. Today's show covers toys and holiday, two very important topics for CPG suppliers. Enroid Toys talks about its most clever product and how the new product came to be. And you'll learn how Unilever prepares for the holiday season and its suggestions for all suppliers. And Tyco tells us another kind of in-store holiday preparedness you need to think about, security. Focus on Suppliers starts now. Focus on Suppliers is presented by 8th and Walton, the premier destination for supplier development, and sponsored in part by Dunn and Bradstreet, Saatchi and Saatchi X, Case Stack, Excel Displays and Packaging, and other outstanding companies. Your millennial fun fact is that 39% of millennials have already started their holiday shopping. What's even more interesting is of that percentage, we know that a large group are only going to do shopping online. So of the 22% of people who are only going to do online shopping this holiday season, we know 28% of that group makes up millennials. What we've got to make sure that we're doing is creating an environment in store that is really going to allow them to connect. So millennials are not afraid to connect, touch back to their childhood, and really get engaged with products. We want to motivate them to get in store or explore online by talking to them about the product benefits, whether it's educational or fun or about exploring. Show them why this toy and this holiday experience is going to be made better. Make sure that you're facilitating that by making a seamless experience online or with pickup. And we'll see you for your next Millennial Minute. So as we are approaching this holiday season and looking at entertaining and gifting our friends and our family, we have with us today joining Lewis Martin. He is the president of the Global Walmart Customer Team for Coca-Cola. So thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Of course. So Santa, we see this Santa appearing again on your advertising. Talk about how this icon, this Christmas icon from the 1930s has really transformed um, in this brand? Well, what's, what's interesting is that most folks don't realize that before our marketing campaign in the 1930s, uh, there were many varied views of what Santa Claus could look like and what he represented, uh, whether he was tall and skinny or short and like a little elf. Uh, we actually put together this campaign in the 1930s to help bring more of an association uh, of how our brands can be consumed as part of special family occasions during the holidays. And it was such an iconic uh, representation of Santa Claus that it has been repeated year in and year out. So it's not so much that we're bringing him back as much as we have continuously uh, used this imagery to help reinforce the connection that uh, Coca-Cola has with the holidays. So when you're thinking about the holiday season, where does really the benefit of doing these customer specific marketing programs for which our many of our viewers, uh, our suppliers would recognize as a retail attainment program? Well, absolutely. I mean, one of the things that we want to make sure we do at Coca-Cola is bring our products uh, within arm's reach of desire of folks who are interested and consuming them and we do that through the partnerships that we have with customers uh, like Walmart and Sam's Club and what we try to do is think of ways that we can bring additional value to that consumer to that shopper who's in the store in the middle of the holiday traffic and the holiday rush trying to find the best opportunities for their family and how do we bring them a little additional value is by putting together campaigns that are special that connect to what's important to them and so one of the things we've done for example at Sam's Club is this uh, holiday truck, which is really a a beautiful little truck that's designed, that's got 24 Coca-Cola mini cans, uh, great for gifting, great for parties. And when you actually check the uh, hood of the truck, it also includes a little polar bear ornament that you can use for your Christmas tree. Uh, So it's a way to make sure that as shoppers are um, going through the stores, uh, they find something special and unique that uh, is most relevant to them. So during the holiday season, it's important for all of us also to turn our eyes to those who are less fortunate. What is Coca-Cola going to do to 
leverage their brand to give back during the holiday season. Well, that's a very important point, Blake, and I'm glad you brought it up because one of the things that we do is we try to partner with our great customer partners like Walmart and Sam's to bring back uh, to our community uh, some of the value and benefits that um, related to the season. So, for example, we're partnering uh, with Walmart specifically across the country with all our bottling system to create a place where people can donate uh, coats uh, because one of the things that we found is that there are many children living in poverty uh, and many of those families in poverty can't afford uh, to buy coats for their children or for themselves during the holiday season. So we're partnering uh, to specifically create this program where you can bring coats uh, to Walmart or you can donate and the products that you buy if for all the money that you spend with our products, we also contribute as a Coca-Cola company to buy these coats. And our goal is to ultimately provide a, about a million coats to those most in need uh, during the holiday season so that they can feel more secure during the holidays. Okay, fantastic. Well, we hope that you all have a great holiday season. Thank you for being with us. We really appreciate it, Lewis. Thank you. Yes, thank you for joining us. Follow us on Instagram at 8th and Walton. Join YouthBridge to make this season extra special for the hundreds of young people who face this time of year cold, hungry, and alone. You can help us provide food, shelter, and gifts so they can experience the same blessings as many of us. Go to YouthBridge.com for your tax-deductible donation. K-Stack, the leader in collaborative retail consolidation programs. We offer the supply chain expertise needed to navigate the challenges of selling products with the world's largest retailers. And we provide customers with a customizable, scalable, environmentally sustainable supply chain with the same advanced technology typically used by larger rivals. By leveling the playing field, K-Stack lowers distribution costs and increases overall margins. K-Stack, retail logistics is what we do. Bentonville Plaza, across the street from the Walmart home office. The best office location offers proximity and services like no other business complex in the area. Call 479-200-1112 today. You just had your buyer meeting. Now there's follow-up to do. Maybe your buyer wants more on seasonal sales or invited you to prepare a joint business plan or set up a date for your line review. Ethan Walton can help. Our experts work with you one-on-one -on -one in a confidential setting to prepare for your next buyer meeting. The classes we offer help you too. Retail link, supply chain management, inventory management, taught in cities across the country, in Canada, and in Latin America. So before your next buyer meeting, contact Ethan Walton. Then relax, knowing that you will be ready. As we continue our conversation about holiday, we want to bring in an expert, Eric White from Tyco, who's really going to give us a better look at the behind the scenes of that category. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. So, and maybe I should say special event, maybe that's a better word for that. But I really want to kind of examine Tyco and Johnson and that merger. Yeah, this past September, Tyco and Johnson Controls, two big companies became one in a complementary way to bring smart, safe, and more sustainable building solutions to our customers. Well, I want you to explain something to me. I want you to explain shrink and RFI. Sure, RFID and shrink. So um, retailers and CPG providers are well aware of organized retail crime, one of the major contributors to shrink. Shrink is what's unaccounted for at the end of an inventory cycle in retail. So uh, the goal of retail thieves is to steal product and then sell it on the black market or the gray market for a profit. So you can interrupt that in a couple of ways, putting a speed bump in front of them by inserting a tag into the product or into the package causes them to have to make a decision. They either have to walk out the door and set the alarm off, which they don't like, or they have to try to tear it out of the package, which could damage the value that it has on the resale market. And so although it's not foolproof, it is a way to put a speed bump in front of them. And that tag today is generally around acoustal magnetic technology or EAS, electronic article surveillance. But as we grow and the security technology business grows, RFID, smart buildings, the Internet of Things, sensors that talk with one another, all of that's possible. And the same process of identifying an item, tracking it as it comes into the store, moves throughout the store and exits mm -hmm. the store is what's really of value to a retailer. So for our viewers, when it comes to personal safety and security, what is one piece of advice you would give them, especially around this time of year? with big crowds. Yeah, so unfortunately security is often an event-driven business, right? Something has to happen in order for someone to take measures. And 
the one tip that everyone should be aware of is trust your instincts. You know there's a little voice inside you. If something doesn't feel right, there's a reason for that. Don't be ashamed to go back into a store and ask someone to walk you to your car. Don't hesitate to pick up your cell phone and have it in your hand. But more than anything, be aware of your surroundings. Look like you're paying attention. Don't look at your iPhone while you're walking in a parking garage. Pay We've attention to your it. surroundings. And, and you present then a harder target for someone that's looking to do something bad. Is it still good advice to have your keys in a certain position in your hand when you're walking to your car, things like that? Uh, all of that's good, but what's most important is aware. Someone who, who's up to no good, the last thing they want you to do is notice them before they notice you. Okay, good advice. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Don Harris with the Heart of Business in Northwest Arkansas, and today we are really pleased to have Brett Raymond with the Pack Shack in Rogers. Now, they started up a few years ago with this concept of working with people like Tyson and other companies and individuals to make meal packs for people in need right here in Northwest Arkansas. And Brett, that's a really innovative thing to do, but you've doubled down on innovation and you've now come up with, with an app, a mobile app that's going to help you get food. Could you, could you tell us a little bit more, uh, more with what you're doing there? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the idea behind the mobile app is to do exactly what we've been doing at our crazy fun feed the funnel parties. We do three things. We help increase awareness about hunger, give everybody something to do, and encourage in, in, engagement in the local community. And so we really want you know, people to be connected right where they live to help serve their neighbors in need. Uh, the app is really designed to make it easy and convenient for people to purchase pre-filled grocery bags and donate those directly to hunger relief organizations in their community. But they don't have to collect those items. They can do it all via the app. On the back end of it, we'll make all of the deliveries to those local organizations on their behalf. Well, that's a little different than most food drives where people put some food in a sack, which is great, and, and deliver it to a food bank. This seems more targeted than that. Yeah, you know what we found is that uh, people were willing to do what we asked them to do around a food drive. So we've been testing this for a couple of years. And we found that if we asked people to bring specific items that were of high value to the food bank and also consistently sized, that they were willing to do that. And then we added in and we went a, a level deeper and we put in specific brands whose corporate causes also align with hunger relief. So you get the right items for nutrition and the right sizes with partners who are already working to, to, to solve this feeding problem that we have. That's right. Not just in Northwest Arkansas, but beyond. Yeah, that's right. And these, the, you know, the items that get purchased are real purchases. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for suppliers who are, who are interested in these things, you know, this goes through a Walmart store. So they're getting real sales. And then we're telling the stories of those brands that, that give those brands a lot of warmth in the eyes of the consumer. Well, it checks a lot of the good boxes, it seems like to me. Now, this app, is it up and running? Is it in test mode? Is it in iTunes store? I mean, how, yeah, how the, that? the app is live. Uh, it's a free app. Uh, it's called Be Neighborly. It's available in the Apple App Store uh, and on Google Play. Easy to download, easy to use. You can donate as an individual. You can start a team. Uh, and, and rally your, your friends to participate, your coworkers. You get have a company-wide food drive all from the palm of your hand. And then there are leaderboards in there, so you can see how you're stacking up against other teams in a food drive as well. And it complements what you're curr currently doing with the packs. It's just an added-on benefit that your team's doing, right? That's right. You know, the need is so great. Uh, the need is increasing across the country because of changes in food stamp programs and, and economic factors. So because of that need, we had to come up with a way to reach more people. And, and this is really a simple way for people to be involved, right? Again, right in the palm of their hand. Brett, we appreciate what you and your team are doing at the Pack Shack. For the Heart of Business in Northwest Arkansas, this is Don Harris, and we will see you next time. Be sure to like 8th and Walton on Facebook. Armatron impressed me when I bought a watch in 2005 before my second appointment to Iraq. And on that deployment, I was hit by a roadside bomb, and I was wearing that Armatron watch. Uh, it's almost as if that watch was a part of me. It went through the explosion. It sat in a drawer, lonely. And it was like my depression. And to pull it out, clean it off, put it on, and it still works, it's my story. 
K-Stack, the leader in collaborative retail consolidation programs. We offer the supply chain expertise needed to navigate the challenges of selling products with the world's largest retailers. And we provide customers with a customizable, scalable, environmentally sustainable supply chain with the same advanced technology typically used by larger rivals. By leveling the playing field, K-Stack lowers distribution costs and increases overall margins. K-Stack, retail logistics is what we do. Join YouthBridge to make this season extra special for the hundreds of young people who face this time of year cold, hungry, and alone. You can help us provide food, shelter, and gifts so they can experience the same blessings as many of us. Go to YouthBridge.com for your tax-deductible donation. So as we approach the holiday season and thinking about great gifts to give family and friends, we have ReaderLink with us today, Mike Hesselbach, he is Eve, EVP and Chief Marketing Officer with this organization. So thank you for joining us today. I'm glad to be here. Okay, so books, I think the world almost thinks about books digitally, but we know differently, right? Yeah. And people are still buying books. Talk about what kind of gift experience readers are really looking for today. Readers enjoy giving books as gifts. In fact, our research shows us that books is among the highest items this Christmas that people will give as a gift. Um, the giftability of books is really very personal because it, it kind of says something about the person who's getting it and the person that's giving it, that there's something special between them, that they, the person giving knows enough about that person. They're keepsakes, sometimes they're passed on to other people, but they're very special. Right. So what are some of the best um, and hottest uh, book items? You've got some great examples here. Yeah, we have uh, the Evergreen Guinness World Records and the Polar Express, which is always a classic for Christmas. We have this really neat Lego pop-up book, which has a number of different pages that show uh, uh, Legos and Lego toys and how you can use them. Really amazing. It, it is. It's absolutely amazing. And then we have just some standby simple items like the, the Little Red Rescue Box, which is Paw Patrol, which is very hot, and uh, little board books in there for the children. So as a parent, what is some guidance that you can give to me as I'm looking for books for my child? First of all, all of our books are family friendly. So you don't have to worry about going into Walmart and finding a children's book that you're not going to have, uh, you're not going to feel good about. So at Walmart, we try to curate the assortment so that we have something for every age group without kind of calling out an age. So we start with infant and toddler board books. We go to young readers, which is a step into reading kind of level books. Then we get into middle grade like Dork Diaries and then young adult like Hunger Games. So there's a whole myriad of reading that you're, you can buy for your child based on their own personal level of reading. So many of our viewers are suppliers. What sort of book recommendation would you give to a supplier looking for a great book for the holiday season? Yeah, for this holiday, we have a num number of them. We have like, Girl on the Train, which has been very popular and has been made into a movie. We have The Magnolia Story. This one is really selling very well. It's uh, Chip and Joanna Gaines. And then, if they're really looking for something to relax, because we know how the holiday season can stretch you out, is they can always do uh, some coloring with the Harry Potter coloring book or the various other coloring books that we carry. And in that's just not relegated to uh, one generation. I hear that that spans all generations. It is. It's multi generational from teenagers up to senior citizens. Everyone enjoys relaxing and coloring. It's become a very social event. Great. Mike, thank you for being with us today, and thank you for joining us. Toys is a great category to talk about, but it can be hard to perhaps break something new into that category. So with us today, we have Lori Cartwright to talk about Inroad Toys and Play Tape. Tell me about your product and how it was developed. Um, Andy Musliner is the owner and founder of Inroad Toys. This project started about 10 years ago, although our company is not yet three years old. Um, he started research and development of this product 10 years ago. He had three young boys. Uh, he had always been a car enthusiast and so passed that enthusiasm along to his children. They, uh, one year, 10 years ago on Christmas, decided they wanted 100 cars for Christmas. Mm -hmm. So they got 100 Hot Wheels cars. And after Christmas, they're sitting around and they realized that there were no roads. They need more track. They need more they need track. More they need place to play. to play. What's so great about this, too, is that it's so easy to use and that you have corners with it. 
Correct. The curves that we started off the company with just the tape, and then the curves were added shortly thereafter uh, because we realized, of course, with a straight roll of tape, making a track is not the easiest thing to do. So with our two-inch wide tape now, this comes with, uh, you can purchase packets of tight curves, which would uh, make a tight curve to create a track. It comes with broad curves mm -hmm. that you can purchase, so uh, that's more conducive to creating a little city um, if you want to do that with your cars. Um, it comes in different colors. I brought a couple of the co colors here. It comes in red, blue. Also, don't forget the girls, it comes in pink and green and other colors as well that and I Thomas didn't try. I mean, there's so many options, right. but I really want to talk to you about some of the challenges you saw with manufacturing and how manufacturing and how you overcame those challenges. We knew that going in as a small company with manufacturers who are used to dealing with major retailers and huge suppliers, we're going to be a little hesitant to work with a company our size. So we made the upfront investment in our infrastructure, in our technology, in our sales force. It costs a lot of money, but it's worth it in the long run to have that done so that they feel safe and secure working with us and are willing to commit the resources that we need. And you feel like because you were prepared, they could see that you were going to be around a while. I think so. I think they were very impressed with our level of preparation, and they were not used to seeing that with a small retailer, a small manufacturer. That's a value lesson that we can share with suppliers watching this show. I love this product. It's so fun. We were talking about you can use this in restaurants. It can go on anything. And what makes it a little bit different is not only is it easy to put down, it's easy to pull up, and it's not going to damage anything, correct? That's correct. It's 100% recyclable. It's repositionable. Even on paper, you could peel it off paper. It doesn't leave any residue. It won't tear the paper. Um, it's completely non-toxic. It's completely recyclable. And made in the USA. And 100% made in the USA. We're very proud of that. I was just getting ready to ask you that. Let's take a look at your packaging, because you have a lot of different licenses that you're working with? Our first license was with Bachman Trains, mm -hmm. um, and they're the, make, they're the creators of Thomas the Train. Of course. So uh, Thomas the Train, of course, being the best-selling train on the market today, we felt, well, they need tracks just as much as the Hot Wheels cars need roads. So um, we developed that track first, and you'll see this two-inch track works perfectly with the little Thomas Minis. It does, and it's, it's neat because it's all sizes, and this is really handy for a parent. I want to talk about the importance of the Made in the USA label because we kind of just went over that rather quickly. How important is that to you when it comes to selling but also internally to be proud of? Well, I think now, you know, particularly here we are in Bentonville, and uh, Walmart, I think, has always expressed the importance of Made in the USA. Um, and we found that a lot of major retailers do that, too. We've taken a lot of pride in that from the very beginning. We've always had all our components made in the USA. Um, we support employment in 15 states in the United States, even a small company, um, a very young and small company. So employees in 15 states. Um, we're very proud of the Made in USA label, and we intend to keep it that way. As you should be. Now, you also have been the recipient of several awards. Yes, we've received 27 major industry awards, including Parents Magazine Awards. And last year, I'm proud to say we were the finalist in the Toy Industry Association Toy of the Year Award. Fantastic to see all your success, Lori. Thank you so much for stopping by. Great information. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back. Visit us at 8thandwalton.com to learn how you can become a better partner with Walmart. Mark your calendars. Saturday, December 3rd is the 23rd annual charity ball for Mercy Health Foundation Northwest Arkansas. Save your seat at mercy.net slash nwa dash charity dash ball or call 479-338-2990. Bentonville Commerce less than one mile from the Walmart home office. You'll love the convenience, amenities, and customized options Bentonville Commerce offers. For more information or a tour, call 479-200-1112 today. You just had your buyer meeting. Now there's follow-up to do. Maybe your buyer wants more on seasonal sales or invited you to prepare a joint business plan or set up a date for your line review. Eighth and Walton can help. Our experts work with you one-on-one -on -one in a confidential setting to prepare for your next buyer meeting. The classes we offer help you too. Retail link, supply chain management, inventory management, taught in cities across the country, in Canada, and in Latin America. So before your next buyer meeting, contact Eighth and Walton. Then relax, knowing that you will be ready. This is Jeff Amarine. We're in the Innovation District in Fayetteville, and today we're going to be speaking with Ed Pratt from Zenwork, really cool company that helps all sorts of different companies across the country with 1099 compliance software. Ed, how are you doing? Great. How are you, Jeff? 
So tell us a little bit more about what Zenwork does. Well, Zenwork is an IRS-approved software provider. We do e-filing for 1099s, for example. We also do 2290s for truckers doing their excise tax work. And then we have a lot of uh, compliance areas around those uh, those two pieces of software. So we help uh, verify independent contractor information, uh, verify their identity. Uh, we do W-9 compliance. So there's a lot of different pieces of that that we help our clients with. And our clients generally are either small businesses, accountants who are helping small businesses, or accounts payable departments and larger organizations that really need to have that uh, compliance focus. Solving real problems for businesses of any size. It, exactly. And that's really where we came up with the idea. Sanjeev, who is the CEO and founder, was uh, struggling with some of those same issues as he was starting the business. Right. And so he, uh, he said, hey, we can, we can help solve that problem with some software. You potentially have lots of customers that are in the supplier community that serve Walmart and whatnot. What's a few pieces of advice you'd give them about compliance and 1099, things you've learned along the way? Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, we deal with a lot of uh, suppliers and then their subcontractors as well. Uh, so anytime that you're hiring someone to do some work for you, whether you're a small business or you're a supplier to, uh, to Walmart, even as a larger business, you want to make sure you're gathering the information for that subcontractor, someone who's not an employee, but someone who's going to be doing work for you. That's through a W-9, first of all, and then you want to validate the information with the IRS, whether that is through the IRS directly or through a software provider like us where we can kind of help you manage that total compliance for those contractors. Oh, that'll be great. We're, we're really glad that you were able to come on today, and we're even more pleased that you're here with us in the Prior Center in the Fayetteville Innovation District. Great. Thanks for having me. And we'll be right back. As we talk about holidays, suppliers go through so many things to prepare and get ready. There's a lot that goes into the production, if you will. So we wanted to talk with our friend Jim Breach from Unilever. Thank you for being yeah, here. Thanks for having me. You guys have so many different brands that you represent. What goes into planning holiday to really get the consumer's attention when it comes yeah. to packaging and marketing? Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot that we do. I mean, first of all, um, you know, we're not really one of the traditional brands in terms of holiday. I mean, obviously, it's a big time for toys and electronics and right. things like that, but it's a big time for entertaining. Um, and it's a huge time for people to think about gifting and how they provide gifts to um, co-workers and teachers and things like that. And so, you know, on the food side of our business, we spend a lot of time thinking about holiday recipes. You know, how are people planning on entertaining? What are the trends that are going on in entertaining right now? What are some of the things that we can do with some of our products, like a Hellman's mayonnaise or like a Breyers gelato or a Talenti gelato? Mm -hmm. um, they can really help people in terms of finding solutions for entertaining because it's usually a time when people want to show off a little bit, right? And, and, and they're having friends and family over and so they want to make sure that it's a great pleasant experience and they can spend time with family and so we, we look a lot in that, that area. On the personal care side of our business it's a big time for gifting and so we work really closely with Walmart and develop some really fun gift packs um, that people can give to um, you know to their loved ones to teachers as I said and, and, uh, and things like that and so it's a real fun time for us it's a real time for like fun and creation mm -hmm. and it's a, and it's a fun time for us as people too you just enjoy it. Yeah what's the lead time though on something like that how far out do you have to start planning? Yeah so we'll start planning holiday with Walmart uh, probably about 11 months before. Um, we'll start having starting our conversations with them about what we're trying to do with gifting. Um, we'll start talking to them a little bit less time on foods. We'll, we'll have a little bit more lead time on foods, but they're just the production that's required in order to make sure that you've got the right gift packs, that they're on trend, that there's something that Walmart you know, thinks that, they're, uh, that their customer's really going to want. Um, it takes you about 11 months to go through that entire process if you want to do it well. So if another supplier is watching, how important is communication with a retailer when you're trying to develop holiday? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's really important because what winds up happening is, um, you know, you can have a lot of really cool insights about where holiday is going. The retailer is going to have a lot of really cool insights about where holiday is going as well. But then you're also going to talk about execution. Um, you know, you can build the greatest holiday pack, but if you don't execute it well, if you don't get it, you know, there on time, if you don't get it there when the consumer is looking for it, if you don't have a plan on how it's going to be presented to the, you know, to the customer, it becomes a real challenge. And so the more lead time, the better. Um, I would tell you that's a minimum of a year if you want to do it well. Oh, wow. Okay. And, you, I, and I wanted to ask you one other thing, and this is just me personally wanting to know, yeah. because I know for me, a lot of the Unilever brands are fun stocking stuffers. Yeah. And sometimes people just think about big things. Absolutely. Do you see sales go up a little bit in those areas? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you know, we, there's a, we, you know sometimes it's trial size. So mm -hmm. some people like to buy the smaller sizes of stocking stuffers. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things that go on in, uh, in, uh, in, in the area of stocking stuffers and kind of thinking about the small trinkets and, and things like that that people can provide for stockings or just a way to say a thank you. 
Happy holidays, right? Happy holidays to you. Thank you for being on the show. Thanks for having me. We'll be right back. Our guests enjoy staying at the 21C Museum Hotel and hosting dinner, meetings, and product launches there. Thanks for joining us. That does it for this week's show, but here are three key takeaways for you to jot down. Remember, you can't eliminate shrink, but you can create roadblocks, so do. It'll help you in the long run. Also, new ideas can originate any place and any time, so set your mind to always be on the lookout for unfulfilled needs for your customers. And remember, you can do good while you're doing well. Just think of Pack Shack and its new way of inviting people to help. It's a great lesson for all of us. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Thank you.